الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هب تف الله. The question was asked. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How do we advise our fellow Muslims to abandon sin? I understand we should be gentle, but even if you're gentle, many people get defensive, angry, and turn away from you. How do we know if we should advise them, and how do we advise with hikmah? Jazakum Allah khairan. This is a very uh, deep question and a very important question. <clears throat> Jazakum Allah khairan to the questioner and the scholars of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah throughout history have uh, dealt with this uh, question in one form or another in talking about how to give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have explained the ayat and ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from those ahadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam is the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'anhu qal sam'atu rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul من راء منكم منكر فليغيره بيد فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه فإن لم يستطع فبقلبه وذلك عرف الإيمان رواه مسلم. In this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said من راء منكم منكر whoever sees a munkar sees something sinful sees bid'a sees wickedness فليغيره بيد then change it with his hand فإن لم يستطع فبلسانه if he's unable to then he should speak out against it. Uh, and, and if he's unable to do that, then he should hate it in his heart, and that is the weakest form of faith. Letting us know that all of those uh, ways of commanding the good and forbidding the evil are what? They are from Iman. They are from faith. And that is faith to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, but that is not faith to Ahl Bid'ah, that many of the groups of Bid'ah, that they believe faith is uh, either fully present or it is. Uh, non-existent and that faith does not fluctuate amongst the many other uh, various forms of bid'ah that they uh, practice and so with this being the case how do we advise our fellow Muslims to abandon sin first of all aban uh, asking uh, ourselves practicing abandoning sin is very important that's first and foremost, is striving your utmost to abandon sin and not spend all of your efforts in uh, being concerned with other people's sin. That's very important. Excuse me. And the reason that being, because sometimes what happens, some of our brothers and sisters spend all of their efforts looking at other people's sins and other people's bid'ah. And they spend all of their efforts. There are some people who write, speak, make lectures, khutbahs even, about other individuals extensively. But then they don't take care of their own house. So very important as a first step in this whole process of, of Amr bin Maruf and Nahi and commanding the good and forbidding the evil, is trying to clean your own house, trying to clean up your own sins and abandoning sins. However, that does not negate you commanding the good and forbidding the evil, as the scholars uh, mentioned. And so, another important aspect related to this question is also looking to the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the asl is that he uh, was gentle and merciful. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the characteristics of the believers, that they are uh, merciful with the believers and they're shadeed or strong with the disbelievers. So that Ahl Sunnah, this is a trait of Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Iman, is that they are merciful with the believers. However, what we find from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which gives us greater explanation of this point, is that we learn from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that sometimes there's a time to be have shidda or, or uh, sternness. And then there's a time to be uh, a gentle and merciful. And that shows us the Ahl Sunnah does not at all times deal with these issues in one way. 
So, for example, you find even from the scholars, you'll find, and more importantly, from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in the Sabil of Mu'minin, the Salaf Salih, you'll find that at times there was sternness applied and at times there was gentleness for something. Even for shirk, there may be, or for uh, the coming close to shirk and, and other uh, actions that the Prophet والسلام, was spoke in a very uh, a strong way in dealing with that munkar, but realizing and knowing from his hikmah that the people who fell into this mukhalifa that they were new to Islam, as they mentioned in the hadith of Abi Waqith al-Laythi radiallahu ta'ala an. And so, with that being the case, it lets us know that at times there is a time to be stern and there's a time to be gentle and there's a time to be in the between that and that depends on the person's level of iman and their farness from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or their farness from practice that looks at the mas masalih wa mafasid the harms in the benefits and let's look at an example just so we are a little clear and even shaykh al-islam there's some beautiful fatal uh, beautiful uh, examples in his Mijmu'ah Fatawa. But let's just c come up with an example that we may uh, come across. Sometimes we see some of our brothers and sisters that we know, and they drink alcohol, they have girlfriends, they, you know, smoke weed, do all kind of different things openly. And they may feel sorrow for it. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on their level of Iman. The point being is you may want to advise them. So you see the brother, you're out doing some driving along or doing some business or whatever the case may be, and you see him coming out of the club and you want to advise him. So it depends on the level of this person. If you know this person to be a person who's generally a person of istiqama and righteousness, and you know that he is going to be very shamed and affected by your... The way you speak to him, maybe he needs a stern speaking to. Ahi, what are you doing? You know better than this. You are such and such. We know you for khair. And you're doing this. Come on, man. You know, so this person you may have to be more stern with. Because you know that this is going to bring them closer. So that's looking at the masalah, the good, uh, the, the, the benefits of that. And the masalah. Uh, is go is stronger than the mufasid than the the harm or the uh, the harm of uh, of being stern with that individual. On the other hand, or another example which may be the opposite is for you may have one who's already known they they're already a person who's struggling. You know this individual, he doesn't pray, uh, you know, or he prays sometimes. He comes around for jumwa. But he's known, he's in the club, he's one of the biggest DJs in the town, whatever the case may be. And you want to advise, this person is, is, is on the fence. They're on the fence, possibly, between Iman and Kufr. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, uh, al-ma'asi barid al-Kufr, that sinfulness is a means to disbelief. So this person may be harmed by you being stern. Well, you being stern with this person, that may just make them fly away. Another example, and this is a real life example, as I mentioned prior to this, is myself, when I was new to Islam, many of us, we had all kind of activities we used to do we didn't know, because we came from a different time period when knowledge was not available, and a different loca locality where knowledge was very little, and we were just reverts with some migrant communities and some brothers that had knowledge that spent some time with us, and others... You know, the, it just wasn't there. The connection wasn't there. And so with that being the case, we learned a lot on our own. So you might find the Mu'edhan is, is jamming the Tupac all the way. Then he goes to make the Adhan for Jumwa with his Timberland boots and his pants sagging and his dreads hanging. Okay? And you may have the, 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 the Imam, you know, doing some other practices that he should probably be avoiding because he of his status and you might have the other people people with all kind of issues in the community they're new to islam they're new to the khair and they're trying their best but you know they're just struggling this sister could have been a dancer the night before now she's a muslim trying to wear niqab this brother is is, is, is was, was selling dope and now he's a muslim 
big beard and he's trying, but he hasn't really moved his heart that way. His heart hasn't moved and caught up with his dress. Whatever the case may be. People who are on the fence, they may be harmed greater by being stern with them. So again, Dawil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it requires hikmah. Mo'edha wa hikmah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, beautiful preaching and wisdom. So wisdom al hikmah, hikmah, and yaj ala shay fi mawdi'ihi. That hikmah, wisdom, is putting everything in its rightful place. I, I like that Arabic definition because it really gives you insight into the term hikmah. You know, it, 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 and, and I just gave a paraphrase in Arabic. That isn't the exact ma'ana of hikmah, but one of the definitions you hear the ulama mention, uh, uh, hikmah, and uh, yajala shay fi mawdi'ihi, is putting something in its rightful place. So that means you know when to, to be stern. You know when to be gentle. And, and this is from wisdom. This is from wisdom in knowing how to, uh, likewise, dealing with ahl bid'ah. The same kawa'i, the same principles apply. That you don't always just make hajr of people. And this is where so many people made mistakes in the past. Because all they knew was cutting people off. And in fact, a lot of times they cut off people who weren't even mubtadi'ah. And in fact, themselves were hisbis. And they were calling other people hisbis. And this is a criminal criminal shameful practice that has went on for many years and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and forgive our brothers and sisters in Islam ameen ya rabbil alameen so then you have the maratib of of commanding the good and forbidden evil that there's different levels and those there's the maratib that are defined in that hadith that we mentioned man ra'a minkum munkarin so there's the maratib of speak uh, of, of of physically Okay, most of the time we don't have the physical physical ability to just grab someone. Hey, st you you need to knock that off. But if you're a father over your children, then that's that's different. Okay, over your family, whatever the case may be. So each situation, the, a government, Islamic government, has that ability to do that to the mujtama, to the society. You know, they have a police force, they have an army, they have this and that and the other to physically. Oh, you're drinking alcohol. We're gonna arrest you. Okay, but maybe you as an individual, you don't have that power. All you can do is it, maybe you have the power to sternly advise them or to advise them in a gentle way, depending on the situation. So there's different maratib and depending on a person's status as well and their qudra, their ability. And that qudra could be physically, it could be uh, in, in various forms. And this is why some of the ulama have written extensively whole books about Commanding the good and forbidden evil only. I have a beautiful volume over there, and Sheikh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has written extensively about it, uh, even a treatise in, uh, about it, and some of the ulama have been teaching that, and all kind of beneficial works about this. And the point being is that it takes wisdom and it takes fiqh fideen because you have to know what you're calling to and what you're, what you're inviting to and what you are uh, calling someone to abstain from. Is it something... You know, knowing whether it's halal or haram, knowing whether you're commanding the good and forbidding the evil, are you causing fitna? So all of those things that comes from wisdom and that comes from elm. And I believe that entails most of what you asked about. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbi wa sallam. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbi wa sallam.